Hey YouTube family, Teal here, Simplistic Fishing. Tonight I'm starting a new series called Bass Fishing 101. I know, creative name, huh? Listen, I had a lot of subscribers ask me to really teach them fishing from the very beginning. So a little bit more beginner videos, teach them some patterns, teach them some things, uh, different types of things with maps and things like that. So I sat down and I thought about it. I've been thinking about this thing for about two weeks now. Um, on how I would actually teach someone how to bass fish if they let's say they moved here from another country maybe from another state and they didn't even know how to bass fish where would I start them so I thought about it a lot and I believe I've came to a conclusion so here's what I'm going to do episode one we're going to talk about maps I know you're like seriously going to have to talk about maps look if you don't know where to find the fish fishing is going to be a whole lot harder so let's start with the basics on where to find fish, what fish like to relate to, bass particularly, what they like to relate to, what we need to be looking for as far as different areas that they're gonna be located in. And then once we know that, then the next episode, I'm gonna take you into seasonal patterns. So we now we know where they should be. And then from a seasonal standpoint, that'll, that'll let us hone in a little bit better. And then finally, in the third episode, we'll step in, we'll talk, start talking about gear and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about reading contour maps. Here we go. The first thing that we need to talk about when we're talking about map breakdowns, I think, is the terminology. There's lots of different terminology out there. You'll hear people talk about structure. You'll hear people talk about cover. And you'll also hear them getting them confused. Uh, between the two. So when we're talking about structure, structure is going to be contour lines. So when you're looking at the map, you're looking at those skinny lines, the, the wider lines, all those different lines that you see on the contour maps, those are basically structure. So structure would be like ledges, drop-offs, humps, anything that the basically the land has created some type of formation um, for you to be able to fish around, that would be considered structure. So get that straight, that's structure. Now cover is totally different. Cover is going to be basically anything, I think the easiest way to say it is anything that that can provide shade. So a rock pile, a lay down, a brush pile, a dock, an overhanging tree, a man-made structure, um, things like that. So that's gonna be your cover. So just to get those straight, Let's make sure we kind of go back. Let's review that one more time. Structure is really contours, right? And then cover is really shade. So if it can provide any type of shade, if the sun were to be hitting it and it can provide some type of shade on one side or the other, and it's an object of some sort, that's going to be cover. Or cover could also be an overhanging tree or a shadow that's provided by a tree that's on the bank line that could be covered the shade could actually be the cover so um, those are really some some tougher terms that i think really get confused a lot in bass fishing and it can confuse the heck out of you when you're first trying to learn um, bass fishing and people are throwing the terms around and they're not being consistent with them so uh, just something to think about so now let's move on and let's talk about humps so the first structure I want to talk about is a hump. What is a hump? Basically a hump is a high spot in the lake or the area or reservoir that you're fishing. So in this example, I took a snapshot. I believe this came from Lake Fork. You can see the major creek channel going through over on the north side of this. And then the highlighted area in the blue, that is actually the hump. And so the way that you can find the humps is really when your contour lines are really tight together, that's a steep incline or a steep drop off. And then when when the contour lines are further apart, that means you've got a little bit of a flatter, uh, more of a tapering type of an area. And then when you see that top of that point where that little, um, you know, where the circle is on top of that hump, that's really considered a peak. So we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But the way to find the humps is really easy. You just go out there and look at your contour map and see if you see any areas where it looks like it it all of a sudden it goes from basically a flat area so those contours are, are wider apart and then you'll start seeing them get really skinny and then they'll usually have a crown at the top of them some of those crowns can be really tiny and some of them can be really big but humps are a really good area to find fish especially if you can find humps like the one that we just saw 
that was right there by the creek channel. Those are money humps that you definitely need to fish. So that would be my number one structure would be humps. So let's move on to the next structure and let's talk about ledges and drop-offs. Drop-offs and ledges. What is a drop-off and what is a ledge? Man, that is really hard to say. And if we're trying to keep things simple, let's just say that they're the same thing. Now, technically, I think you could say that there is a difference between a ledge and a drop-off, but I don't want to get that specific with you guys. I want to keep this high level so that everybody understands what we're talking about. Essentially, really, we're looking for the same thing, right? We're looking for a place where we've got a significant drop in depth. So whether that be a creek channel swing, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, where it's running up against the point or a bluff and creating a ledge, and then there's a drop off off of the side of it. Um, so lots of different ways that you can look at this. But I think the terminology drop offs and ledges often get used together. And so for this example and for just you know simplistic terms, let's just make sure let's just call it the same thing. <clears throat> so when we're looking for this type of structure, what you want to look for is anywhere on these contour maps where the lines get really close together. So notice here where you see all these green fishes. You'll notice I put them right on top of these spots where it gets really, really dark. Well, it's dark because there's a lot of different lines there and it's really, really sharp draw. So there's essentially there's a ledge there and then you've got the drop off off to the side of it. But again, a lot of people will call that a ledge or a drop off. And essentially, I think they're talking about the same thing. Now, we could get technical, but let's not get technical. Let's keep it high level. So anyways, looking at this map, you can see here all those green fishes are marking ledges or drop offs. So we've got drop offs in those areas. Uh, or ledges in those areas. And those are all really good places to find fish. And it's definitely a seasonal type thing. So, you know, you'll find them on drop offs and ledges in different areas of the lake during different parts of the year. So we'll talk about that here in the next episode about seasonal patterns. But I really want you to focus here on how to find those breaks. <clears throat> those breaks are really, really important. And I've caught a ton of fish off just focusing on major breaks like this. So really pay attention to your maps and really pay attention to where you have these really sharp breaks. Because if you get in the right depth at the right time in the right location and find one of these breaks, it can be the difference between winning and losing tournament. So anyways, wanted to go over that with you. Now let's jump in. Let's talk about something that is really difficult to find on a map if you ask me, but it's a lot easier to find on Google Earth and that's ditches and drains. So let's jump into that. And let's talk about it. Here we go. What is a drain and what is a ditch? Well, a ditch essentially is where you're gonna see maybe external pipes coming out, like you see here in this Google image, um, where the drainage ditch comes out, or drainage comes out and creates a ditch in the landscape. So that, was what, that would be what we refer to as a ditch. Those absolutely difficult to find on uh, Navionics or any type of contour map because they really just don't show up. So the best way to find ditches, in my experience, has really been to just go and look at Google Earth and try to find the ditches that way. Now, you'll also hear us refer to things called drainages. Now, drainages and ditches can also be kind of commingled together, just like structure and cover gets commingled. And uh, the other things we were talking about just a minute ago getting commingled, everything gets commingled together. But really, if you're looking for drainage, drainage is a little bit different. So I found this image that was out on Google, and I thought it did a really great job of explaining drainages. So you imagine drainages, imagine like two hills, right? You've got two hills that come up and then they peak and then they both come down at the same angle and create basically like a little ditch that's right between those two humps. That is considered drainage or considered a ditch. So the way that you find those on a contour map is a little bit more difficult. So if we look up here on the upper right hand side, let's ignore the other stuff for right now. We're going to talk about that stuff later. Some of it we've already covered, but let's look at the upper right hand side. When we're looking for drainages, those are where the V's in the contour, the V's actually point uphill. So in this case, this actually isn't a lake. This is just a contour map of the land. And the only difference between the two drainages here is one has water and one doesn't. So a great example is that upper right. You see where the V's point uphill. That's a great example of where you could find drainage and a lot of times those fish will, will locate right in the very valley of those so take a look at those and then also if you look down to the middle of this image you'll see the same thing again the drainage is 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 highlighted there and then you see that the v's point uphill so that's very very important that you understand that because there's a big difference between the drainage 
and the ridges. The ridges actually have V's as well, but their V's actually point downhill. So we'll talk about ridges here in a little bit, but don't get them confused. If it's pointing downhill, that's a ridge. If it's pointing uphill, that is actually drainage. So let's go ahead and move on. We're going to talk about saddles next. And that's, again, another great area to find some fish. What is a saddle? Well, first off, saddles are really easy to find on the map if you know what you're looking for. And essentially, you're really, you're just looking for something that looks like a saddle. So you've got a higher spot on the front, and then you've got a higher spot on the back, and it makes a dip to where it makes a low spot in between those two pieces of structure. Um, so if we're looking here on these, you know, where this is at, you can see this is on Lake Levon. There's a real good saddle on Lake Levon where that island is that's out there. So right off of Clear Lake, you see a main lake point that comes off. It goes to a, to a dip, so it dips down, and then it comes right back up to the land to make that island. So that is a really good example of a saddle. And saddles are great areas to, uh, to fish. Now, not all saddles come out like that you know, on land and then dip down and make a dip and then come back up to land. A lot of saddles are even underwater. So you need to take a look for, for those areas as well, because those are really good spots too. So in this example that you're going to see next, this is Lake Fork. This is a great example of a saddle as well. So you can see where a point comes off from the left-hand side. The saddle is right where that fish is. And then it comes back up to another like hump that's out there in 27 feet. So you've got essentially a deeper spot that's happening right between these two 27 foot areas. It goes down to about 30, 33 feet, somewhere in there um, between these two little humps or between the point and the hump. So that is considered to be a saddle. So you'll be able to find these things all over the map. A lot of times you just got to look a little bit closer. Always look when you're around those humps to see if there's saddles around them. And then always, obviously you always want to look around islands as well. So again, great areas to fish. A lot of times, you know, those are good areas to fish almost all times of year. So don't overlook them. Always go and check them out. You never know, you might catch some fish there. Let's move on. Let's talk about our next topic. You knew I wasn't going to get through a lake breakdown. Um, we're talking about lake breakdowns and contours and all that without talking to you guys about points. Points are very, very important. They're basically the key to fishing, the foundation of fishing. They're the place where you can find the most fish pretty much year round. You just got to know which points to fish. So you're going to hear a lot of terminology when you're around fishermen. They're going to talk about main lake points. They're going to talk about secondary points. And they're also going to talk about long tapering points. And so let's break these down for you. The first thing is main lake points. So main lake points basically are just points. They can be underwater points or they can be visual points that you see on the land um, that touch the main lake or the main branch uh, of the lake. Maybe it's a major creek arm. You could call that a main lake point. But if it's just a cove, that would not be a, a main lake point at all. But in this example, these points are facing the main lake. So where you see ML, those would be main lake points. They're touching the main lake. And then the SP, those are going to be your secondary points. So those are points that are behind those main lake points in the creek arms, in the coves, in the pockets and stuff like that, that there's points in there. Those are considered to be secondary points. So when you hear people talk about find the secondary points, they're off the secondary points. They're talking about actually getting inside the coves and the creek arms and finding the points inside of there. And if they say they're all up on the main lake points, well, then now what, what you know now is they're not back in those coves and those pockets. So stay away from that. Get out on the main lake and just stay in those main creek channels. Or if you, if you have a, a creek channel type of a, a fishery or if you're like Hubbard, just stay in the main lake and only fish the main lake. Don't go back into the pockets and don't go back into the coves fish anything that you see that are points there, whether they're underwater or on top, and you'll start to have some success. So pay attention to what the locals are telling you, definitely. And then understand that terminology, because if you don't even understand what they're talking to you about, it's definitely not going to help you. So the last thing we have to talk about when it comes to points is you'll hear people talk about find the tapering points. And you're like, what the heck is a tapering point? Tapering point essentially is a point. Usually it's, they're talking about main lake points that are tapering. So in this example, you'll see off to the right where I circled this, this is a tapering point. So it comes off into the main lake and you'll notice that it's tapering. So it's, 
it's very gradually making its way out into the main lake. So it's a long tapering point. Also, that other point that we looked at earlier where you have the main lake point in the middle, that's a long tapering point. It comes way out into the, uh, into the main lake there. So those are both great areas to look at uh, when you're trying to find like long tapering points. Those are great areas in the fall uh, to look at with swim baits and things like that. So make sure that you understand when they're talking about points, they're going to say, find the main lake points. You got that, right? You got that down. We just talked about it. But if they say, find long tapering points in the main lake, well, that's when you know that you're going to look for those points that don't have the really thin lines, right? That they're a lot wider, they're further apart, and they stretch a lot further out into the main lake. So look for those long tapering points, especially in the fall. You're going to find some good stuff. All right, let's jump into a uh, to creek beds, creek channels, all that creek stuff. Going to be fun. Here we go. Creek beds, creek channels, channel swings, bends and turns. What the heck does all this stuff mean? Well, let's talk about this and let's talk about what we're really looking for. So creek beds, as far as here in Texas, from what I can tell, they don't really produce a ton of fish for me. Um, unless I'm in the bigger lakes where there are larger creek beds where they're almost like big creek channels. So there's a big difference between a creek bed and a creek channel, but sometimes they can kind of be intermingled as well. So don't always write off creek beds because some creek beds are just, they're marked on these contour maps and you'll see them and there's, you'll go over there and you'll scan for them and they're just not defined anymore. They're completely washed out and you may get lucky and there'll be a hard spot where that creek bed used to be but that's all you'll find, not really a good place. But then you'll find other places like in this image, which this is a creek bed, um, also a creek channel as well, um, where it swings up and makes turns and things like that. So in this example, this is a great example of maybe if you're wanting to look for a, a turn or a bend. Well, if you're looking for the bend or the turn, you would find it down there on the lower part of the image where you see that bend that actually happens. So it swings and what they mean by a swing, and we'll show that in a new image here in just a minute uh, on Texoma that has a really good swing, but a swing is where it actually comes up and it hits the bank line. So you've got really a couple different swings here, but the main swing we're looking at is the one on the, the lower half here where we're at, where the arrow is. So the swing actually comes up and hits the bank. And then you have a bend. The bend is basically that turn that happens right after it hits the, uh, the bank line in that area. So a little bit of a difference between a bend and a turn. Well, there is no difference between those two. Bends and turns are the same things but swings and bends and turns are a little bit different. A swing is, yes, it's, it's a turn in the creek channel or the creek bed, but a swing typically is coming up and hitting uh, the structure or hitting the bank line or hitting the point somewhere. So they call that a channel swing, a channel bend or a channel turn is really just a turn in the creek channel. Um, whereas you can see here what we were talking about. So anyways, that is creek channels creek bends, and creek turns. Let's move on. The last thing I want to talk to you about are creek arms, pond dams, and flats. And I think that's pretty much going to cover us for the main things we need to look for when we're going through the contour maps and really trying to find good places to fish. So here's a perfect example of a creek arm. These are two main creek arms that are actually out on Lake Fork, Big Caney and Little Caney. Then here again is another example of a creek arm. This is actually up on Table Rock Lake. Now this one's a little bit different because it's a smaller creek, but it's still considered a creek arm because it has a creek that is feeding the arm. So the, really when they're talking about creek arms, just look to see if there's a creek that's feeding into that cove. And if there is, that is a creek arm. Some creek arms are massive, like Big Caney and Little Caney, and then other ones are smaller, like the ones that we saw on Table Rock. Next thing I want to talk to you guys is about pond dams. Pond dams are money places to find fish, especially in the summertime here in North Texas. You can find pond dams a lot easier, I think, by going out to Google Earth and really pulling down the water and seeing what you can find, um, you know, just based on the images, because a lot of times you'll be able to see the exact pond dam and then you'll be able to mark it. Of course, we have that on our simplistic fishing cards too, so you could have those out there if it's a 
a lake we broke down for you, but go out and look for the pond dams. Navionics will mark pond on there, but a lot of times they won't mark the contours that are around that pond dam. So you kind of have to use Navionics and Google Earth, but once you find these pond dams, they can be really, really, really good. So you'll see here on this image, this is out on Lake Fork as well. This is a great pond dam to fish around. I know because I've caught a really big fish right here in this area. Um, so look for these pond dams, fish on the insides of the pond dams and the outsides as well. I've had more success fishing off the insides of them than I have on the outside, but I can't say that one would be better than the other. It could just be that, uh, you know, I just I feel like that's the way that it goes. So the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is flats. Flats can be very confusing. In fact, when I first started fishing, <clears throat> I was really confused on flats. I really thought that if somebody said that they were in the flats, that basically meant go to the back of a cove, like you see in this image, and find the big flat area. So flats, we talked about that with the contour lines. If it's a flat, the lines are going to be really far apart. Sometimes they're so far apart, there really aren't even any lines. So to me, that was a flat. Um, and that's correct. That is a flat. That is one example of a flat. You can also have flats that actually go out and are on the tops of points. They're on the tops of humps. Um, maybe there are large flats that just come, you know, right off the, the edge, but yet they're a huge flat that you'll see. So there's lots of different, different types of areas where you can find flats. And in this image, this is actually on Tawakati. Um, there's a big flat that comes off. It's like a main lake point, I guess you can say, with a lot of different points <clears throat> to it, but it has a great big flat on top of it. So if you're looking for flats, really what you're looking for is just places where you either don't see any contour lines or you see very few contour lines. That's a flat. So a flat's not always going to be in the back of a cove. A flat can be on top of a point, could be out maybe just off the land a little bit, and you just got a nice little flat that kind of sticks out. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can determine if there's a flat or not. But don't be confused on thinking that flats are just in the back of coves because you'll overlook some really good fishing spots. Well, that's it. That is a wrap. Basically, you have learned all of the key areas to look for when bass fishing. So we talked about flats, creek channel swings, creek beds, points, tapering points, secondary points, main lake points. Heck, I can't even remember everything we talked about. But if you look in those areas, and then if you take what we're going to talk about in our next episode, which is going to be seasonal patterns, you take the seasonal patterns, you take the hot spots that we talked about and the key areas that you need to look at based on structure and based on cover, you take those and you put those three together, you will really start to find fish. Definitely take a lesson from an old man here. I used to pound the bank day after day after day after day. I'm not sure why I even fell in love with fishing because I never caught crap. I catch like a couple fish a day. And then all of a sudden I started, you know, kind of starting to figure it out that, hey, you actually have to pay attention to where you're fishing. If you're paying attention to where you're fishing, you're gonna have a lot more success. You're gonna catch a lot more fish and you're gonna catch a lot bigger fish. So take all this information in, really take some notes, go out and break down your leg and, and don't cheat and, and do a breakdown that I've done. Actually go down and break down your leg. Even if I broke it down for you, uh, break it down to your own and see what you can find. You'll be amazed at what you'll be able to uncover. Um, in fact, I wanna leave you on one note and uh, I was fishing with Taylor, uh, who's gonna be on the live stream this Sunday at, uh, at 8.15, so I'm looking forward to doing that. But I was fishing with Taylor up in the river and Taylor's had tons of success in these local tournaments. He's won tons and tons of money. Um, you know, I think you've heard me say, I think he's a legend out there. So Taylor made one comment and it really stuck with me. And that was, you know, it's really hard to catch other people's fish. So even though I'm giving you all these points and telling you where to go and things like that, it's hard to catch my fish, right? I've got my fish, you've got your fish. So you really need to focus on that. Go out, find your own spots, find your own key areas that you think are good spots. Pay attention to them, look at them on the map. When you catch a fish, look on the map and see why it is that you caught that fish there. There's probably a reason. You're close to a creek bed, you're close to a creek channel, you're by a point. There's current in the area. There's something there that brought that fish there. Maybe it's shade. Start noting that stuff and paying more attention to it, and you're going to start catching a lot more fish. Hey, until next time, hope you catch your PB guys. Take care.